Hi there. In this video, let's look at what are the different forces that are acted upon a body. The first force that can be acted upon a large body, say for example, a planet, would be the force arising due to a gravitational field. For example, the moon is orbiting the earth due to the gravitational field of the earth. A second kind of force could arise due to something known as a magnetic field. We've all played with certain magnets and we saw that when a north pole and a north pole try to meet each other, it gets repelled while a south and a north pole attracts each other. Moving on, another type of force could arise due to something known as an electric field. An electric field, unlike a magnetic field, is due to charges. It is this type of force that we're going to be learning about and due to electric fields, we have something known as current flowing in the wires. Just to have a completion of knowledge of what are the other type of forces, a last kind is a force that could arise due to something known as a nuclear field. It is this kind of a nuclear field which exerts a nuclear force due to which the subatomic particles of protons and neutrons are held in the nucleus. So going from top to bottom, that is moving from a gravitational field to a nuclear field, the range of force increases while the distance at which these forces are effective keeps on decreasing. When we talk about the range of these forces, the gravitational fields are long range forces. They are long range forces. That is, they operate at large distances. Say for example, the distance between the sun and the earth. While when I move down from gravitational to magnetic to electric and then to nuclear, nuclear fields are short range forces. That is, these forces come into play at a distance of say between the proton and neutron that is of the order of 10 to the power of minus 15 meters. So you can see that as we bring matter closer and closer depending on the different types of fields the forces that come into play vary. In our discussion we will be focusing mainly on the electric fields. Now these electric fields is what cause something known as the electromotive force. E M F. What is EMF? EMF is electromotive force. What do you think electromotive force means. It is the force that is exerted on electrons and make it move. So here is a picture of a single cell battery. A single cell battery. And here on the right, although it's covered, it seems like we have three of these, right? So what do I call this? This is a three cell battery. How do you think would we differentiate between these two in a circuit diagram? That's quite simple. A single cell battery is represented with a single combination of two lines, one longer than the other. The longer line represents the positive terminal which is this, while the shorter line represents the negative terminal, that is the bottom part over here. Of course, we should not forget to draw the wire as well. What about a three cell battery? So this is a single cell battery. What about a three cell battery? There will just be a combination of three of these. Something like this. With the wire. 
So this would be a representation of a three cell battery. This terminal would have a positive terminal. This would have a negative. So within the battery, we see that we have electrons moving in from the positive end towards the negative end. So hence, because this top end is losing electrons, it ends up having a deficiency of negative charge, making it a positive terminal. Whereas the other end, that is in this case, the bottom side of the battery has a surplus number of electrons now collected over here, making it negatively charged. The electric field within the battery, the electric field points out from the positive terminal towards the negative terminal in this direction. 